Hello everyone. Welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and of late we have been doing this series on hydrology. So in today's video in hydrology we are going to look into the subsurface hydrology or the groundwater hydrology as we say. So where the concepts of aquifer, its various components, its types and many more things we are going to learn in this video. So watch the video till the end because it's going to be very important considering the levels of water crisis across the world and India. Now, if you are a new user to this particular channel, please do subscribe our channel. And if you want to support our channel, please do join our channel and keep learning. So now let's learn. So now as you can see this is our topic for the day subsurface hydrology where we are going to learn about the concept of aquifer its various types processes of flow and also controlling movements. So before going ahead into the concepts there is an announcement to make that if you want to take our paid courses for UGC net exams or for UPSC exams we have our website called the geoecologist.com you can go there and you can check for the recorded courses plus the study material based courses online. Then the another website is there where if you want the content of the YouTube as ebooks as PDFs you can go to geographyebooks.com and download it after a little payment so these are the two websites that you should check and the link is given in description of this video as well now coming to our topic here that we are going to look into the subsurface hydrology which means we are going inside the earth so surface hydrology we have talked we have talked about runoff we have talked about overland flow Hortonian flow and others now we are looking into this unsaturated zone which is also here you see intermediate zone then you have capillary fringe and here is your groundwater table this is called saturated zone so you are going to look into this inside of the land here in this particular video so let's understand the subsurface hydrology with the first thing that is definition and its significance or what we say is importance so the first thing to look into is that subsurface hydrology is the study of how water moves below the earth's surface right so whenever we say water moving below the earth surface it's very important to know that below the earth surface belongs to geology right and above the earth surface belongs to geomorphology so this particular topic that we are dealing in was basically claimed by the geologists but we are looking into it from a geographical perspective for our better understanding so here just take a look into this concept that how this subsurface hydrology is operating so the water found in spaces within the soil now this is very important that within the soil these are the pores or spaces within the soil and the rocks which is very important or crucial for providing fresh water for drinking agriculture and industry so we take all these groundwater and use it for all these purposes so we commonly call it groundwater hydrology now let's understand the concept of aquifer so what is an aquifer if you see this particular diagram you can look into it yourself so the water that percolates inside infiltrates inside right is going to these layers and is called the groundwater so aquifers are the porous and permeable two words remember these two words very carefully that porous and permeable geological formations or we can say rocks that can hold water and also transmit significant amounts of water so how much you are holding and how much you are transmitting these are the two things that we need to look into right and they can be made up of a variety of materials for example you have sand gravel fractured rock and they can occur at different depths right so this is something that you look into and aquifers are important because they are very important for our water usage domestic to industrial purpose for agricultural purpose right for communities they are very important so you have a human connection with this underground water that's why we say this is part of also applied geology right so one of the scientists that we should know when we are discussing subsurface hydrology is Mr. Darcy. So Henry Philibert Gaspard Darcy, who is this person? He was a French engineer. Now this person is into 1850s when he's talking about this hydraulics important contribution. So there is a law called Darcy's law for flow in porous media. That's why when we say porous, so we have to talk about Darcy's law. So Darcy's law equation describes the capability of the liquid to flow via any porous media like a rock. So how to understand it in better way? Look into this. The law is based on fact that according to which flow between two points, 
this is point one and this is point two. So flow between these two points is directly proportional to pressure differences means to gradient. There is a word called gradient pressure differences between the points and also the distance and connectivity of flow. So how much is the distance and how is it connected? These are the things here talked about in Darcy's equation in Darcy's law within the rocks between the points. So measuring the interconnectivity is what we talk about is permeable ability right so look into the statement from this particular law that volume of water which passes through a bed of sand of a given nature is proportional to the pressure and inversely proportional to the thickness of the bed traversed so proportional to pressure inversely proportional to thickness this is important to be looked into so Darcy's law describes this particular relationship amongst this entire discharge system porous medium and pressure so using a specific sign convention look into this q is here and here you have minus k a dh upon dl so where q is rate of water flow k is hydraulic conductivity a is column cross section area and dh by dl indicates hydraulic gradient so these are the things that hydrologists take into not geographers but understanding in simpler way it's always important when we are learning a topic here so Look into the aquifer properties based on this Darcy's law and also the concepts that we have evolved. So aquifer properties refer to the characteristics of the subsurface, these formations, these rocks. As you can see here in the diagram itself, there are certain terminologies which in the beginning of this entire series we talked about. So there is a repetition kind of thing here as well. So flowing artisan well is here. There is something called potentiometric surface, right? So if you have not watched the earlier videos, the introduction to hydrology, you should visit there to look into these, you know, words. Now, look into the important aquifer properties the first is porosity itself now porosity is expressed as a percentage of total volume of the material in terms of where you have void and spaces and remember in general high porosity means more groundwater act you know it's basically how much groundwater is you know confined in that that's porosity and how much is able to flow out is called permeability so it often measured in terms of hydraulic conductivity which is measure of the ease with which water can flow out so flowing of water is permeability and stoppage of water containing of water is based on porosity these are two very important things here now there is third important thing called transmissivity transmission so product of hydraulic conductivity and the thickness of aquifer is called transmissivity basically what is represents the rate at which water can be transmitted simply right then you have something called storage coefficient look at these terminologies carefully because in geography we generally don't understand these things this is pure geology or hydrology so look into these words and terminologies and please make a a note of it so storage coefficient is basically volume of water that an aquifer releases remember it releases that storage coefficient right from storage per unit decline in hydraulic head so how much is the per unit decline how much you know water is going away so storage coefficient represents amount of water that can be stored in an aquifer right so this is very important now look here the specific yield now what is specific yield specific yield is the ratio of volume of water that can be drained for an aquifer by gravity to the total volume of aquifer in simple language what is this yield it represents amount of water that can be drained by gravity remember gravity is always draining this water right from the pores of the rock or soil so this is called specific yield then we have something called aquitard property what is an aquitard you see this layer here aquitard so this is low permeability layer sometimes these layers are very important to hold on to this aquifer and their properties are very important so your thickness and permeability is the determining factor and the last one is aqui you see here aquiclude so it is a geological formation or rock which is essentially impermeable that doesn't allow the water to go further right so this is very important to contain the water table right so here you observe that this is the sequence in terms of yield if i say specific yield here what is the situation this could be a multiple choice question in some examination so remember aquifer the greatest then aquitard then aquiclude then aquifuge this is the sequence here in terms of yield that we say right so maximum is aquifer that allows the water to go inside 
right this is how i'll look into it now look into types of aquifers we have talked about this earlier as well so you have unconfined confined and there is something called perched which is like a base where you have this perched aquifer along the water table so look into this so what kind of material we're talking here gravel sand silt which is bearing the water load so unconfined is basically what these are those aquifers where water seeps from ground surface directly above right these are unconfined here right now water table if you talk about the upper surface of the water in unconfined aquifer is called water table so here if you sit this is your water table and when we say water table is depleting this is what depletes here right then we have to drill further hole so this is artesian well that we have to create further into confined right and if confined aquifer is also exhausted then there is no way you can recharge it completely again so this is a problem here right then confined aquifer basically trapped between two layers as you can observe here in the diagram itself right and here we require a artesian well for pumping so these things and some are seep well and all those things are being used these days and first aquifer the word perching is carefully sitting on a top or a base so this is where you observe this impermeable layers of rock or sediment exists above main water table so here you can see little perched aquifer so here depth is less right so sometimes you'll see in an area where you'll see that normally the water table is down at some places you see water table is you know higher why because there is a perched aquifer here right so this is something very interesting and perched aquifers create a local water table that's what we talk about right now let's look into the processes of water flow so as we know that rain falls here infiltration happens and then there is a recharge right and we have saturated zone you have sh shallow aquifer you have deep aquifer and this is where groundwater flow and you know discharge also happens so obviously the three processes will be there porosity very important higher porosity means more space for water to be stored then higher permeability means more more moving of water without hindering ease of movement right and the third is hydraulic gradient so remember this hydraulic gradient is based on the slope of water table or which we say is potentiometric surface so this is an average slope that we calculate in the area so remember water moves from areas of higher hydraulic head higher pressure to areas of lower hydraulic head lower pressure so this is what we talk about that this triggers the entire process of water flow subsurface water flow and what are the controlling factors or controlling movement factors so remember the first factor is gravity itself so water generally moves downward due to gravity so here slope and the degree of slope and the gradient is very important right then what we talk about is the pressure gradient so in confined aquifers pressure difference between various points drives the water flow so pressure can be causing water to move up through wells in artesian systems as well then you have recharge and discharge areas so recharge areas where water enters into aquifer and what is discharge where ground water exits as aquifer such as springs lakes pumping walls so this is going out this is coming in right so recharge and discharge then you have human activities which is going to be very 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 important for today as well as for future so you see a lot of pumping out so in recent news if you observe around in media delhi has used 99% of its underground water this is what we are looking into already chennai had depleted its underground water table because of excessive pumping these are the things that we are looking into and contamination pollution from surface activities is happening so here underground water pollution is happening eutrophication is the process where you looked into a lot of poisonous material being mixed into the underground water so this is that we talk about controlling movements now some key concepts in subsurface hydrology which are being researched on in today's world and people are working in these sectors so aquifer storage and recovery this is called asr now what is this asr in this process water is injected into aquifer storage and later retrieved for usage so this helps in managing water supply right so you have to inject it right through pipes and drown water modeling if you observe scientists use computer models to simulate that what is the situation going to be in one year two year five year so this simulation is very important that how much is it going to sustain right so the word is sustainability for sustainable usage we are looking into this so understanding these concepts will help us in managing our water resources more sustainably and we hope that india as well as the world come out of this entire 
you know water crisis soon as possible so now when we have learned about the basic idea of this subsurface hydrology darcy's law and several other things in this today's session now we almost complete our lecture series on hydrology so remember this entire hydrology lecture series will be compiled into ebooks and will be available on the geographyebooks.com as a ebook for you to download so if you have not downloaded it you can go there and download it for yourself so i hope that from the first to this last lecture on hydrology you enjoyed you learned and you had a good revision so all the best wishes for your examinations wherever this knowledge is applied and keep sharing and also please do leave a comment on every video please do like and share best wishes to all the learners take care